Aigiming Usam Ningto Kompomite, A English Yozan. Hi everyone, today we'll be doing the 10th chapter of class 8 English, The Schoolboy. The Schoolboy, this is a poem written by William Black. So William Black, he was born on 28th November 1757 and he passed away on 12th August 1827. So William Black was an English poet, a painter and also a printmaker. So some of his notable poems are The Tiger, A Poison Tree, The Little Black Boy, etc. So today's poem, The Schoolboy, is a poem written by him in the year 1789 and published as a part of his poetry collection called Songs of Experience. So he published a collection called Songs of Experience and in that book, in that collection, this poem was included. So this poem is about a boy who loves to see the beauty of nature during summer. On the other hand, this boy also hates going to school. So let's read the poem. I love to rise in a summer morn when the birds sing on every tree. The distant huntsman wings his horn and the skylarks sing with me. Oh, what sw sweet company. But to go to school in a summer morn, oh, it drives all joy away. Under a cruel eye outworn, the little ones spend the day in sighing and dismay. Ah, then at times I drooping sit and spend many an anxious hour. Not nor in my book can I take delight, nor sit in learning's bower. One through with the dreary shower. How can the bird that is born of for joy sit in a cage and sing? How can a child when fears annoy but droop his tender wing and forget his useful spring? O oh, father and mother, if buds are nipped and blossoms blown away, and if the tender plants are stripped of their joy in the springing day, by sorrow and cares dismay. How shall the summer arise in joy, or the summer fruits appear? Or how shall we gather what griefs destroyed, or bless the mellowing year, when the blasts of winter appear? Now let's see the poem. Let's, le let's try to learn it by reading it again, line by line. I love to rise in a summer morn, when the birds sing on every tree. Here, the poet is saying that the, he likes to wake up early in the summer morning when the birds sing on every tree. The distant huntsman wins his horn. Huntsman means the hunters. So early in the morning, the hunters who are going to hunt down the animals. So they used to blow horn. They used to blow horn so as to help them in hunting the animals. And the skylark sings with me. Oh, what sweet company. Skylark, as you know, it is a songbird, the small songbird which is always mentioned by most of the English poets in their poem. So from this stanza, we can know that the poet is a nature-loving person who loves to see the natural beauty of the early summer morning. But to go to school in a summer morn, oh, it drives all joy away. So as I have told you earlier, the poet hates going to school. See here, in this poem, the poet is imagining himself, he is imagining himself as a schoolboy, as a school-going boy, and he hates going to school. So all the joy, that uh, all the happiness he got, seeing the nature, so seeing the, singing, singing, seeing the bird singing on the tree, skylarks and all, the, and the sound of the huntsman's horn, so all those joy he got, all those happiness he got, seeing the nature, living with the nature, they are all driven away by the thought that he is going to school. Under a cruel eye outworn. The cruel eye symbolizes the strict nature of the teacher in the school. So what happens under the cruel eye? The little ones spend the day in sighing and dismay. Little ones means the children. So the children, he himself, he himself and his children, so uh, his friends. So they spend their day under the strict and cruel supervision of their teachers. So he himself spent his day under the strict and cruel uh, nature of his teachers, always worried and upset. So in sighing and dismay means always worried and upset. Ah, then at times I drooping sit, means the poet further expresses 
in this line, the, the poet is saying how he stays in his classroom. He sits in, the, in his class uh, with his head always drooping, always hanging down his head in a very timid way, as if he's afraid of something. And spend many anxious hours. Anxious here it means worry or nervousness. So the poet is always the poet always spends his time uh, in school being nervous. He's always nervous in his in his classroom. Nor in my book can I take delight, nor sit in the learning's bower, worn through with the dreary shower. So he was not delighted or happy reading his books. He was not able to sit in the learning's bower. So learning's bower here actually means the classroom atmosphere. So he hates the learning's bower, which means uh, some shady, which actually means some shady and serious place meant for learning. So here, here in this poem, he's, uh, he's describing his classroom. He feels tired of learning. He hates his classroom. So how can the bird that is born for joy sit in a cage and sing? The poet here, the poet is comparing himself with a bird, a bird which is born for joy, for happiness. But how can he, how can such a child be made to sit in a cage? So the bird who is meant to sing freely can't be made to sing in the cage. So how can a child when fears annoy, but droop his tender wing and forget his youthful spring? So the poet is asking if it is fair to make the child afraid of lots of things, afraid of teachers, afraid of punishment, bounded by the rules and regulations, so drooping his tender wings, the wings he's supposed to use to fly. So he is drooping them, drooping his ability to fly and forget his youthful spring, his childhood days. So in other words, the child, the poet is complaining that he is not able to enjoy his childhood. He is not able to, to learn in his own way. Instead, he is bounded by lots of do's and don'ts. So, oh, father and mother, if buds are nipped and blossoms blown away, buds are the, are the part of the plant which is later developed into a leaf or a flower. So whereas blossoms mean the flowers. So he is now talking to his parents. Remember that in the, pre in the previous lines, in the previous tenja, the poet compared himself with the birds. Now he is comparing himself again with a plant, a small plant which is supposed to enjoy and uh, blossom in the springtime. So he's giving them a condition. So what's the condition? If the buds are destroyed, if the blossoms are blown away. So what is the next line? And if the tender plants are stripped of their joy in a springing day, by sorrow and cares, this may. As I have told you earlier, spring is the time when flowers bloom. But what if the plants are restricted to bloom? If the tender plants, if those small plants are separated from its springing day, from its springtime, by sorrow and cares this may, here means distress, by sadness and, and lots of cares and restrictions. So in simple words, what if the plants are given many restrictions and rules, like they can grow this way, but not that way. The plants can blossom or produce flower this way, but not that way. If so many rules are given to them, will the plants grow? Will, the, will, will they happily blossom? No. So in these lines, he questions his parents, his father and mother, about the strict rules and unnecessary cares he is bound to live with. So if he is to, if he is to spend his childhood with anxiety, with fear, with lots of do's and don'ts, do that, don't do that, or in that kind of situation, so there won't be any joy, there won't be any happiness. So childhood is all about having fun. And if he is not allowed to do that. How shall the summer arise in joy? Or the summer fruits appear. And when the poet says summer, he means the, the youthful age of him. The child won't be able to have a fruitful summer or youthful age. Why? Because his springtime, his childhood was very hard, was very difficult. If he is always worried, always afraid of or being careful of the do's and don'ts, then how will the youths be joyful? Or how shall we gather what griefs destroy or bless the mellowing year when the blasts of winter appear? So the poet further says, how are they going to gather or collect what the griefs or sorrow have destroyed? 
In other words, how are they going to collect, recollect his childhood if it is destroyed by grief and sadness? Or bless the mellowing year. Mellowing year means uh, the autumn season. As you know, autumn season is a short duration, short, short season at the end of the summer and before the beginning of the winter. So it is a season when most of the fruits begin to ripe. The poet is saying that he won't be able to have a fruitful mellowing year. So joyful childhood is as much as important as schools or education. So if he is not given a joyful childhood, he may not become a good man or an adult. So let's have a quick recap. So this poem is about a boy who hates going to school. He wants to spend time with the nature. He wants to play. He wants to have fun. Then he wants to expose his creativity in his own way without those restrictions. But he is bound with many do's and don'ts. Many restrictions, many rules are there. So he questions his parents for all those strictness or rigidity, we call it rigidity, rigidity. So he compares himself with a bird who is born to fly freely in the air. So he also compares himself with a young plant. So he, he expresses his fear that if he is going to spend his, his childhood without having any fun, any joy, he would be upset. And an upset childhood won't make him a happy and satisfied adult. Because of those strict rules. Those are called do's and don'ts. Joyful happy And he was afraid that Adult amoi raga su, madu gi mana magi happy childhood amal lek hidra bani na, magi childhood tu dia mu halal aroi dana ko, adu na maram raga mase satisfactory su oi oi aroi hai dana mana si dah hijari ni ko. So this is a very sweet and simple poem. Yang icam cembak poem mama ni ko. So in this poem, let's also see the rhyming words here. Rhyming words yang na fazana happy. The first one uh, ends with mourn. The second, the second line, when the birds sing uh, on every tree, ends with three. See, the first line, I love to rise in a summer morn. Second line, when the birds sing on every tree. So, what are the ending words? First line, morn. Second line, three. Are they rhyming? No. What about the third one? The distant huntsman wins his horn. Now, the first one, morn, rhymes with the third one, horn. That is why, instead of saying summer morning, the poet has used manangasagi word to morning do tensel le, morn onto e. That is why, morn on travelina, now it rhymes with the third one. Then again, and the skylark sings with me. The ending word is me. It rhymes with three. So, and again, it also rhymes with the last one. Oh, what sweet company. So here, the poet has written this poem in such a way that it is beautiful to read. Yamna read the mamma galwina na iba sailing. Yamna pazaba sweet and short sailing. Amma khakni kwa.